Okay. Let's do a fairly hardcore video. Fairly, moderately so. Hardcore video on the fundamental simplicity of cosmic mechanics. And if I actually apply really fundamental, there's that word again, fundamental, um, or concrete uh, platonic retroductive logic to the nature of field theory and the differentiation out, which humans have always had and humans have not answered. Because you notice every uh, epoch of human comprehension, whether it be the ancient Greeks who, I mean, they understood, as well as the ancient Egyptians, mastered some incredible stuff. Every epoch thought that they had a grip on everything that was going on. The only intelligent people were those that were actually incredibly wise, incredibly wise, and yet still knew that there was an, a tremendous amount yet to be comprehended. But every age suffers from this egotism where we think we know what the hell's going on, and we've fundamentally never reconciled um, matter from non-matter, manifest from unmanifest, nor have we differentiated out or uh, failed to actually... Uh, retroduct the fundamental basis of field theory because current science and physics and modern scientists are not actually uh, modern physicists who are scientists are not actually scientists in the true platonic sense because they're not interested in ultimate truth but they are fundamentally are atomists and what they specifically are are mathematicians but getting to the point in reconciling out matter from light for example now it is a foregone conclusion that of course most people don't know this that uh, you know the higher the frequency the light the more power it actually has in electrovolts, like red light is 1.7 electrovolts, uh, green light averages about 2.3 electrovolts. We get down near ultraviolet, it's uh, about 3 electrovolts, and we go in towards uh, gamma radiation, it's much higher. But it should be the case, based upon everything we understand about the visible universe, that I make a retroductive logical conclusion about a reconciliation between light and matter. We know for a fact that uh, once a neutron is released that it becomes a proton, something like 17 minutes later. So fundamentally there's only one particle. By the way, I've made countless videos on the electron and I've, there's no such thing as an electron particle. I mean this is a, a, a farcical belief in atomistic theory which modern physics is that. I mean it is literally mathematicians and mathematicians don't believe in anything that's not palpable and uh, countable. Uh, people actually have made fun of me for that, but I'll actually point out to them that the greatest minds in electrical theory like Tesla, James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, and Charles Proteus Steinmetz, who collectively together are a mega mountain of uh, electrical theory that gave us 100% of the electrical systems that we have in the entire world. All of these people had one thing in common. They laughed and scoffed. And I have quotes, countless quotes in prior videos of them scoffing at the notion that an electron is a particle. So we know fundamentally there's only one particle. The neutron becomes a proton after 17 minutes. So therefore, neutron is only a differentiation of a proton given a different modality within the nucleus of an atom. So it seems apparent, and I'm going to give you some logical examples to this, that we can actually make foregone conclusions based upon platonic retroductive knowledge, and this is episteme, but specifically gnosis, where we're actually able to retroduce, retroduct uh, the nature of matter as not being anything different from that of light, and it's going to become incredibly simplistic here in a second. But somewhere in the range of 30 to 100 electrovolts, and it could be a hair higher, I mean, I'm not going to speculate on what range it is, but I mean, far, far above the level of gamma that what we call EM turns into, and I'm going to use this term, this uh, term loosely or vaguely and call it hard light, which is kind of humorous. Um, we're talking about electromagnetic radiation that's of an such an incredibly high power that it is a quasi-stable particle. And I'm going to give you evidence for that in a second, but... It is also the case that every branch of current physics and uh, current science that's uh, chasing its ass around like a dog chasing its tail has actually tried to unify electricity, gravity, and uh, magnetism and dielectricity and the GUT, Grand Unified Theory. And of course they've always been unified. I mean, stupid human beings are like children when it comes to modern science. I mean, water and steam and ice are fundamentally, of course, just water. I mean, a pathetic child, you know, could actually uh, deduce with... Uh, small mental capacity of the fact that water, steam, and ice are one and the same thing. 
human beings are trying to unify, or should I say ignorant scientists, trying to unify uh, four branches of field theory into one thing. They've already been unified. There are no dualities in nature. Nature has no dualities. Duality is a contradiction, which fundamentally is the basis for the non-comprehension of how something works based upon limited human comprehension. But if we actually take a look at a few uh, cosmic phenomena, we could actually make a conclusion, a foregone conclusion, that retroductively and uh, based upon Occam's razor, it cannot exist any other way that what we call matter, the fundamental particle, whether we call that a proton, or whatever we call it, just call it a fundamental particle, is nothing other than super high energy uh, spectrum of uh, electromagnetic radiation in the extreme as far as power is concerned. Each little atom, of course, is its own dynamo. I don't want to go too long into this video without you know, blabbing on endlessly, but we take a look at the quasar, for example, which emits electromagnetic radiation at high frequency, usually gamma or even higher depending on the mass of the quasar. The radiation can be observed, and I'm quoting someone else here, radiation can be observed across the electromagnetic spectrum at radio, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, and X-ray and gamma wavelengths. So this is a high power, stellar phenomena. Now we go to a pulsar. Rotating a neutron star, a white dwarf that emits a beam of electromagnetic radiation. So right now we're talking about super powerful cosmic entities who are actually emitting high power gamma, X-ray, you know, some high potency stuff, you know, upwards of uh, well past ultraviolet, obviously, up, up in the electromagnetic spectrum range of gamma. But as far as humans' conception, the electromagnetic spectrum ends somewhere at gamma or just above gamma, depending on who you ask. But it would be the case that the fundamental particle is nothing other than super high energy quasi-stable electromagnetic radiation, or EMR. But even EMR is incorrect because from the perspective of physics, all EMR is light, whether that be visible light or otherwise, and they think that it is a wave-particle duality, which, by the way, is the most insane bullshit conception that I've ever read from any branch of pseudoscience in my life because wave-particle duality involves three words which are absolutely not the basis for anything in nature. There are no dualities in nature, no way, no how, Nature has no dualities. A wave is not a thing. There's no such thing as a wave. Let me repeat that again if you think I've lost my mind. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. There is no such thing as a wave. Let me repeat that again. It's like, this is a wave. No, that's my hand moving. A wave is what something does, not what something is. So, there are no dualities in nature. There is no such thing as a wave. And we take wave-particle duality in the sense that people talk about photon. Well, light is certainly not a particle. However, if it becomes powerful enough, ironically, and as we're about to uh, conclude here, based upon what we observe as far as cosmic phenomena, Occam's razor, and platonic retroduction, at extremely high power, it does become a particle, but visible radiation, gamma, ultraviolet, that's not a particle. That's a misapprehension of the coaxial nature of light, which is transverse electrical magnetic and longitudinal pulse perturbations. Um, Let's take the third cosmic phenomenon. A blazar is an active galactic nucleus, AGN, with a relativistic jet, a jet composed of ionized matter. So the larger these cosmic phenomena are of a supermassive stars that become quasars or pulsars, we know for a fact we've seen countless evidences of galactic jets. If you don't know what a galactic jet is, you actually see them in the center of uh, several uh, galaxies in the far up distance. And uh, also seen them from uh, SMBs, uh, yeah, supermassive black hole. Of course, a black hole is a misnomer. A black hole is neither black nor is it a hole. It is a mass where dielectric has actually overthrown magnetism's ability to keep anything in the physical universe because anything in the physical universe only exists wholly due to magnetism, which is force and motion. We only have two principles in the universe, force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. If something is so, so, so massive, its uh, dielectric acceleration overcomes its magnetic, uh, the magnetic principle of that mass's matter collectively to keep it within the visible universe. So we have something that is to the human mind completely contradictory. We have something that is so incredibly massive yet it actually has no magnitude. In other words, something super massive with no magnitude. It literally got so large that it vanished from the empirical universe, which makes no sense at a superficial level, but if you actually raise your mind up a little bit, you understand that everything is a battle between two forces. Everything is pressure mediation. If the dielectric overthrows the magnetic, then something literally blinks out from the visible universe. Its mass is still there so far as a topos with Cartesian coordinates, but it has no magnitude because the mass Mass equals magnetism. The mass has vanished from the universe. So, hard light. Now, of course, I say that jokingly. We can, 
We could agree to call it countless different things. I'm just going to say hard light because it's slightly amusing. But uh, I mean this seriously, though, that extremely high end of the spectrum, so around, I don't know if it's above 100 electrovolts or not. But the smaller the space also, too. The smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Um, so we have a supermassive black hole at the center of galaxies that have been observed. You see galactic jets that are literally, with geomagnetic precession, which is hard to imitate geomagnetic precession with my fingers here, with geomagnetic precession are emitting trillions and trillions and trillions of tons, literally, of hydrogen. Hydrogen is nothing other than a fundamental particle, of course. One proton, right? Of course, there are different types of hydrogen, more complex versions of hydrogen. Tritium, deuterium. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always thinking about a thousand things at once. But at the supermassive black holes, the geomagnetic precession begins, we actually have a fact where the deceleration of the creation of fundamental particles, instead of the creation of light at various spectrums, be it X-ray or gamma or ultraviolet, in a quasar, in the case of a quasar, in the case of a pulsar, at the center of these supermassive black, black holes, we see either see as black holes in the far-off distance, or usually at the center of galaxies, we actually see trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen being emitted at the geomagnetic precession of the polar ends of the black hole. And this is amazing what the black hole was actually technically doing, the supermassive black hole. And I hate to say black hole, because like I said, a black hole is neither black nor is it a hole. But at the center of these black hole phenomena, what we call a black hole, what they're doing is, is that the power level is so insanely high, whether it's 100 electrovolts or whatever power rating it is, because like I said, the smaller space, the higher the capacitance. Infrared is 1.7 electrovolts. Green is 2.3 electrovolts, and ultraviolet is 3 electrovolts, and gamma is much higher. But incredibly high power levels in electrovolts, what we have is the creation of a fundamental particle, which is quasi-stable. From the sense of human beings, of course, this matter, you know, it, it hangs around for billions of years, but in the sense of time, of course, has no meaning. Time is only a measure of magnitudes, by the way. We measure things and how long they last. From our perspective as pathetic human beings, of course, matter you know, lasts for a perdurable eternity. Billions of years, the same little particle of uh, atom, atomic particle, will exist, but from the perspective of the universe, it's just a, you know, a fart in the wind, uh, humorously. But, I mean, these uh, galactic uh, jets are nothing other than super powerful light. I mean, I say amusingly hard light. In conventional EMR, the coaxial circuit is mutually manifest as a field perturbation where, and this is my writing, by the way, I'm not reading this from somebody else, EMR, a coaxial circuit, is mutually manifest as the field perturbation where the right-hand rule of transverse electrical magnetic perturbations exchange existence with the longitudinal propagation of the dielectric pulse perturbation. But a much higher power, instead of a blinking pulse perturbation, i.e. EMR, with a set frequency, i.e. light, whether it be gamma or visible light or otherwise, there is a fundamental soul particle creation where light requires field perturbation propagation, this hard light, so to say, attains absolute non-frequency. In other words, when the supermassive black holes create an EMR of such high power that there is a literal near non-frequency. Now, they do create their own electron cloud, and of course I say electron, there's no such thing as an electron, but you say this charged cloud because an atom, and even scientists will agree on this, is nothing more than a super, the world's, the universe's smallest um, uh, engine or dynamo. I mean, that's all any atom is, whether it be hydrogen or gold or any other atom. Every atom is just nothing other than a tiny, super, ultra, you know, the smallest type of uh, engine or dynamo. Um, Everything that we call mass and matter, the fundamental particle, of which there is only one. Occam's razor and the comprehension of nature and field mechanics and applying platonic retroduction in the absolutist sense must say that there is only one fundamental particle, and of course there exists harmonics of this particle. This is also Walter Russell's discovery. He actually created this flow chart, look it up, type in Walter Russell elemental chart that everything is a harmonic of, based upon a compounding of this fundamental particle. Uh, stars emit light. They're not that powerful. Galactic, jet, uh, galactic jets emit, and we can think of another term to call it. I don't care what the hell anybody calls it. Galactic jets are so incredibly powerful, they're literally emitting hard light. 
i.e. trillions and trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen, because they literally are that powerful. Um, everything we call the fundamental particle, specifically the hydrogen nucleus, or hydrogen itself, because there's no such thing as an electron, every atom is nothing other than a tiny little nuclear generator. A quasi-stable one, from the perspective of stupid humans, you know, it lasts a near perdurable eternity. But they're not stable. There's nothing stable that's phenomenal. All phenomena is, by definition, according to Pythagorean logic and Platonic retroduction, is unstable. So if a supermassive star collapses into a black hole, then the black hole is a superstar. A black hole is neither black nor is it a hole. It's rather something so massive that it has no magnitude. The dielectric has literally overthrown magnetism's ability to keep in the visible universe, as I said before. This is akin to a type of absolute zero. The only logical reason that galactic jets are emitting anything at all is that the extreme power manifests this hard light which has a centrifugal impetus which self-ejects from the counter-spatial point source along, and the only way it could be ejected, the only point source, uh, the only source which it could be ejected at, which it is being ejected at, an observation, is along uh, the point of geomagnetic precession on either pole. That's actually fundamentally incredible, and if you actually penetrate your mind into it and think about it a second, this is the reconciliation of light versus matter. There's no such thing as light versus matter. There is only light. What we call matter, the fundamental particle, is nothing other than super high-powered, ultra-high energy, whether it be 100 electrovolts or 150 electrovolts. I don't know, but that would be the creation of the fundamental particle. That's the reason why quasars and pulsars and are emitting uh, uh, radio and ultraviolet and X-ray. Our star emits visible light. It also emits UV, it emits a lot of stuff. But I mean, it's not that powerful in the scheme of things. One up the scale from our star, we have quasars and pulsars that are emitting much more powerful light. Gamma, X-rays, you know, they kill you in an instant, obviously. And then up from that, we have supermassive black holes that are emitting also a type of light. So we go from visible light, not so powerful, which we get from our sun, much more powerful deadly light and quasars and pulsars, and one up, it's emitting the absolute form of light, the highest power of light, which I am humorously, however quasi-seriously, I'm calling it hard light. Whatever we call it doesn't make any damn difference. These uh, supermassive black holes are emitting hard light. That is the only logical Occam's Razor's paradigm, um, Platonic retroduction, and uh, Pythagorean logic. That is the answer. The universe is really simple. It's that human beings are really that stupid. We think matter is one thing and EMR or light is another. They're not. They're one and the same thing. We think gravity is one thing and dielectricity and magnetism and electricity are a different thing. They're not. They're one thing. They're just different modality expressions of the same thing. Like water and ice and steam. It's all water. No, no, we got water here and ice here. And, you know, it's hard. You know, that's hard. That's, that's different because it's hard. And we got steam over here, you know. That's vapor. No, it's all the same thing. They're just different modality expressions of the same thing. So, this is the absolute reconciliation of light and matter. They are all absolutely, fundamentally one thing, separated by potency or power. We literally, the premise of applying Platonic uh, retroduction is that the absolute highest in the 100 electrovolts or whatever it occurs at is an absolute non-frequency, because all EMR is a set frequency. But if it attains such a high power, its pulsation becomes a non-frequency. It is literally like a power that is akin to absolute zero. I don't know if you've ever seen or know what a super liquid is. I grew up experimenting with liquid hydrogen and superconductors, so to say. A, uh, a, uh, a super liquid chilled to a near absolute zero, liquid hydrogen, liquid helium temperatures. It's weird. It defies gravity. It flows up out of the chamber. It does weird, freaky shit that liquid's not supposed to do. Um, so at powers of incredible potency, there's no longer frequency. There still is, but it's, a, it's at a cosmic frequency that is incalculably high. And of course, every atom is nothing other than a dynamo. And that is where, of course, they generate their electrical cloud that exists around them. Someday in the far distant future, human beings will prove everything I said in this video, 100% absolutely correct. 
No one else has ever uh, said stuff like this before. Not that I've ever known. I've never read anybody say that uh, light uh, and matter are the one and the same thing and use any sort of logic to apply that to a conclusion thereof. The only person that's done that is me. And I say that egotistically, you could say that yes or no, but I don't know of anybody that's ever done that. But that can be the only answer to the simplicity. There is no other answer. Matter is nothing other than super high potency uh, EMR. Every bit of logic and wisdom applied to comprehending fundamental cosmic mechanics says that, that it cannot exist any other way than that. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If not, you can tell me to take a jump off a flying, take a flying leap off a cliff or whatever makes you happy. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.